All right. To start our next unit, we need to make sure that we remember how to factor. We're going to be working with polynomials, and we need to factor polynomials, as we discovered last unit, that it's easier to sketch polynomials when they're in factored form. So we're going to learn how to factor all sorts of new ones. But before we can move on ahead and be able to factor new types of polynomials, better make sure we know how to factor the old ones. But before we talk about factoring, let's remind ourselves about expansion. Okay, so we see our first example here is 2x minus 3 times 3x plus 1. So I'll give you a moment to copy this down and to rainbow, okay, to actually do the expansion. If you'd like to push pause, you can. I'll give a second for people to try these. Okay, assuming you've had a chance to try it, let's just see, remind ourselves when we multiply this binomial, the first term gets multiplied by everything in the first in the second term, and the second term gets multiplied by everything in the second binomial. <coughs> so we have 2x times 3x, which of course is 6x squared, 2x times 1 is plus 2x, then we have a negative 3 times a 3x, so that's negative 9x, and then a, finally a negative 3 times a 1, which is minus 3. We have this two common like terms in the middle, so a 2x minus a 9x gets us a 7x minus a 3. So that's the expansion of that binomial. And that works for rainbow, but of course it works for anything. And you can go in whatever order you want. So here it can work for trinomials or quadinomials, whatever. It's still everything on the outside gets multiplied by each term on the inside. I'm actually going to multiply the second one by x. I'm going to do it this way just to show you that it can be done that way. You can do the x cubed times the, the other binomial if you want, but I'm going to start with the x and multiply it through with every known, and then negative 2. It's fine. It'll be the same thing. So if I multiply the x times the x um, to the power of 3, and make sure I have enough room here, x to the power of 4 plus 2x cubed, minus x squared plus x, and then rainbow the negative 2, minus 2x cubed, minus 4x squared, minus 2x, minus 2. And then, of course, this plus 5 is not part of the multiplication. It's an add 5, so it just hangs along on the end. It's not the multiplication. And if you had done it the other way, so if you had gone off and taken x squared and multiplied it by this and this, and then done the same thing with 2x squared, multiplied it by that and that, and gone in that way, you'd probably end up with the same thing. So, Well, you should end up with the same thing, so I'm not worried about the order in which you multiply. Now, of course, we have lots of like terms here. We got this one and this one, which actually is going to result in a zero, so that's gone. We have a minus x squared and a minus 4x squared, and we have an x and a minus 2x, and then finally those two constants at the end. So if I simplify, <coughs> x cubes are gone. it would be minus 5x squared, uh, minus x, and then a plus 3 at the end. And hopefully you'll have the same thing in yours. So that's the expansion review. But of course, what we're going to be doing is going backwards. So we're going to start with this trinomial here and want to go backwards. And that's what factoring is. Factoring is the reverse of expansion. So on the left-hand side, example one, we know how to factor this trinomial. We learned all about that in grade 10 and practiced it again in 11. Well, now we've got new polynomial stuff like this. So a quartic, we're going to learn how to factor it backwards into that. So that's what we're going to learn tomorrow is how to factor B. Today, we're going to make sure we remember all the different types of factoring that we already know.
So the first one is common factor. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first type of factoring we do all the time is to always look for a common factor. That's going to make your that's going to be your best one that you have. So whenever you can, you're going to try and look for a common factor. It's going to make your life a lot easier. So never forget about it. Always look for a common factor. So here we're finding a number that divides evenly into both. So um, 3 goes both into 3 and 12. But then you go off and look for the x's as well. You say, can x be divided into both of them? Yes. What about bigger? x squared? Yes, we'll go into both of them. x cubed? We'll go into both of them. x to the power of 4? Nope, that's too big. It won't go into the second one. So our largest common factor is x cubed. Then we take each term and divide it by that x cubed. So the 3 divided by 3 is gone. x to the power of 5 divided by x to the power of 3 is x to the power of 2. Plus 12 divided by 3 is 4. And there's no x left. You can always double check that you've common factored correctly by quickly doing rainbow backwards. So we see if we multiply that, we get 3x to the power of 5. That's good. Multiply by 4, we get 12x to the power of 3. So we're set. So we common factored successfully. So the first one, always look for common factor. It might make your work a lot easier. Then go from there. Next, simple trinomials. I'll give you a second to write that down. So simple trinomials are when a equals 1. Remember the a value is the leading coefficient, it's the number out front. So technically there's an a right here. Um, in this case, the a is 1. So, but the way we look at it is it's a simple trinomial because it's just have an x squared as opposed to like a 2 or a 3 there. In this case, we have a strategy. And we've already done a little bit of this factoring in, in last unit. But we'll remind ourselves we're looking for a number so what numbers multiply to get negative 14. Okay, so it multiplies to get that and adds to get 5, plus 5 adds to get that. So if we stop and think about it, of course, you recognize the two numbers that multiply to negative 14 and add to 5 are negative 7 and 2. Of course, it's easier to go through all the multiples of 14, so you know 14 is 14 and 1 and 7 and 2. It's just a matter of what combination of those will get you a positive 5. So sorry, that should be a plus 7 and a minus 2 to get me the positive 5. And of course, once I know those, the form is this. We know it looks like a binomial. The first of them goes here, plus 7, and then minus 2. Of course, you can always rainbow that to make sure you get it backwards and to confirm that you have your factoring. Uh, if someone else had written down this, x minus 2 and x plus 7, of course, that is also correct. The order in which you write the factors down um, doesn't matter. Okay, so simple trinomials, pretty straightforward. And uh, I have confidence that we can factor simple trinomials.